living former monarchs whose thrones were abolished. In last week's video, we met six living monarchs who chose to retire, hand their thrones to their children, and enjoy their golden years. But not all living former monarchs chose to get off the throne. Some were pushed off. In the 20th century, 28 national-level monarchies across the world were abolished. Their former sovereigns were downgraded, exiled, or even executed as the majority of these revolutions and coups happened in the first half of the century, in the aftermath of the First and Second World Wars. Few ex-monarchs are still alive today. Their children and grandchildren carry on defunct royal dynastic lines, and, if they're lucky, enjoy what's left of their ancestors' palaces and fortunes. Today, there are only four living former monarchs who lost their thrones when their monarchies were abolished. All of their reigns ended, and one began in bloodshed. Two refused to accept their dethronements. And one managed to return to his former kingdom and be democratically elected prime minister. Let's meet them. Jamshid bin Abdul, former Sultan of Zanzibar, was born in 1929. His father was Sir Abdul bin Khalifa al Said, the 10th Sultan of Zanzibar, a Muslim sultanate consisting of a group of islands off the east coast of Africa. Sultan Abdullah was not a popular leader. He suffered years of ill health and had his legs amputated. He died at just 52. His son, Jamshid, thus became sultan at the age of 33 in 1963. Zanzibar was ethnically diverse, consisting of a wealthy Arab and South Asian minority and a poor black African majority. Following the new sultan's ascension, elections were held. Despite winning a majority, Africans were underrepresented in parliament and tensions mounted. Five months into Jamshid's reign, the United Kingdom gave up its protectorate status over Zanzibar. Without the protection of the British, the Sultan was vulnerable. In early 1964, the Zanzibar Revolution broke out. Afro Shirazi party leaders mobilized, overran the police, and took their weapons. Then they overthrew the government. The Sultan, his family, and entourage fled the island on the royal yacht as rebels overran the palace. They looted Arab and South Asian-owned businesses and homes across the island and assaulted and murdered civilians. The death toll is disputed, but may have been as high as 20,000. Revolutionaries abolished the monarchy, established a new republican government, and united with the mainland of Tanganyika to form the new nation of Tanzania. Meanwhile, the royals docked in Oman, where their cousins were the ruling family. The sultan's siblings were allowed to remain there, but the Omani royals considered the sultan a security risk. He flew his wife, Zulika bin Abdullah al Afai, six children and entourage of 61 relatives, friends, and household staff to the United Kingdom. They moved into a luxurious London hotel near Buckingham Palace. But within two weeks, funds ran low. Many returned to Oman, and the royals downgraded to a modest hotel on the unfashionable side of Hyde Park. In May, the British government gave the former sultan a hundred thousand pounds, plus a fifteen hundred pound monthly allowance, which he used to purchase a semi-detached house on a quiet street in South Sea, Hampshire on the seaside. A far cry from the royal palace on the white sand beaches and crystal waters of Zanzibar. In the aftermath of the 1964 Zanzibar Revolution, another young man, 18-year-old Farouk Bolsara, fled the island with his family and immigrated to the UK. He would later change his name to Freddie Mercury and become famous as a member of the rock band Queen. Former Sultan Jamshid and his family kept a low profile. His neighbors had no idea they were living next to royalty. 
As his children grew, most of them returned to Oman. Jamshid continued to petition to be allowed to return, but was denied. Finally, in 2020, 56 years after the revolution, the 91-year-old ex-sultan was permitted to retire to Oman to be with his family and spend his final years in the country of his ancestors, on the condition that he not title himself sultan, but merely a member of the Zanzibari royal family. Simeon II, former Tsar of Bulgaria, was born in 1937. His father, Tsar Boris III, sent an Air Force officer to the Jordan River to obtain water for Simeon's baptism. They were part of the royal house of Saxe Coburg and Gotha Kohare. Simeon's grandfather, Ferdinand I, was a German prince who had been elected ruler of Bulgaria in 1887. He was a first cousin, once removed, of Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, who married Queen Victoria of the UK. Thus, Simeon was a fourth cousin to King George VI. His mother, Princess Giovanna, was the younger sister of the last king of Italy, Umberto II. At the outbreak of World War II, Tsar Boris tried to remain neutral, but powerful factions within Bulgaria pushed him to side with Germany. Hitler pressured him to export the nation's 50,000 Jews to concentration camps, but he resisted. Hitler was furious with the Tsar's insubordination and his refusal to send Bulgarian troops to fight against the USSR. But the Tsar held firm, insisting the Jews were needed to construct roads and railways as part of a forced labor program. Boris returned home and died of apparent heart failure at the age of 49. This may have been caused by the stress of the conflict, but his doctors noticed his symptoms, particularly blotches on his skin, were suspiciously similar to those suffered by Greek Prime Minister Ionis Metaxas, who had also dared to stand up to Hitler. It was strongly suspected that the Führer ordered both men to be dosed with a slow-acting poison. Tsar Boris's legacy is still debated. While he is credited with protecting many thousands of Jews from the concentration camps, he did allow the persecution of the Jewish people in Bulgaria and the exportation of Jews living in Bulgarian-controlled regions of Greece and Yugoslavia. 11,000 people were sent to Treblinka on train tracks built by the forced labor of their brethren. They virtually all perished. Six-year-old Simeon thus became Tsar of Bulgaria. His uncle, the Prime Minister, and the Lieutenant General of the Army were appointed his Regency Council. They launched a media campaign in the young Tsar's name in an attempt to uphold the national morale during the war. A year into Simeon's reign, Stalin declared war on Bulgaria and the Red Army invaded. The three regents were deposed and they, all members of the last three governments, heads of the army and journalists, were rounded up and executed. Simeon, his sister Maria Luisa, and Queen Mother Giovanna were held prisoner in Varan Palace, while three new Soviet regents were appointed. They lived in terror for two years. In 1945, the Allies won the war. In 1946, a referendum was held, during which Bulgarians were pressured by the Soviet army to vote 95% in favor of abolishing the monarchy. That year, six other European monarchies were toppled, those of Albania, Croatia, Hungary, Italy, Romania, and Yugoslavia. The Bulgarian royal family were exiled. They went first to Alexandria, Egypt, where Queen Giovanna's Italian family was also living in exile. There, Simeon studied at Victoria College alongside ousted Crown Prince Leka of Albania. In 1951, dictator Francisco Franco granted the family asylum and they moved to Spain. Now called Simeon Borisov Saxe Coburg Gotha, the former Tsar continued his studies in Madrid. In accordance with tradition, on his 18th birthday in 1955, he read a proclamation to the Bulgarian people, declaring himself Tsar. 
he never accepted the sham election, which ousted him. In 1958, he enrolled at Valley Forge Military Academy in the United States and graduated a second lieutenant. He returned to Spain and studied law and business and began a career. In 1961, Simeon married Spanish aristocrat Dona Margarita Gomez Acibo y Seula. The couple had five children, Cardam, Caril, Cubart, Constantin, and Kalina. In 1989, the Berlin Wall fell, along with communist governments across Europe. In 1990, Simeon was issued a Bulgarian passport by the new democratic government. In 1996, 50 years after he lost his throne, he returned to Bulgaria and was cheered by massive crowds. In 2001, he campaigned to become Bulgaria's prime minister, promising to raise the standard of living. His party won a large victory, claiming half of the seats in parliament and securing the ex-Tsar's premiership. He served for four years during which Bulgaria joined NATO, but his promises to improve the lives of his people were not fulfilled, and he was voted out of office in 2005. Simeon, now in his 80s, continues to live in Bulgaria with his wife, Margarita. The government has allowed him to occupy his childhood home, Verona Palace, near Sofia, which is maintained by the city as part of a public park. He has never renounced his claim to the throne and continues to use the title Tsar of the Bulgarians. He wrote an autobiography in 2014. He and his sister have sued the Bulgarian government in an attempt to reclaim several pieces of royal real estate. They lost their suit for three properties, including Verona Royal Park, but they won the right to Zraska Bitriska Palace near a popular ski resort. Ganindra, former king of Nepal, was born in 1947. He was the second son of Crown Prince Mahendra and his first wife, Crown Princess Indira. An astrologer warned the prince that it would bring bad luck to look at his newborn son, so the baby was sent to be raised by his grandmother. When the prince was three, his mother Indira bled to death after the birth of her sixth child. She was 24. Her death led to the construction of Nepal's first maternity hospital. In 1950, political turmoil forced Crown Prince Mohindra, his father King Tripuva, and other royals to flee to India. The king took his eldest grandson, Prince Berinda, but four-year-old Prince Garinda was left behind. The prime minister was furious with the king and called an emergency meeting of the cabinet. They declared the only male member of the royal family still in the country, Garinda, the new king of Nepal. The crown was placed on his small head and coins were issued in his name. He remained king for two months until his grandfather negotiated with the government to return. Demoted back to prince, Garinda studied in India with his elder brother. His grandfather died in 1955, and his father, Marinda, became king. In 1969, Garinda graduated from the University of Nepal. In 1970, he married his second cousin, Kumal Raja Lakshima Devi. They had two children, Prince Paras and Princess Prerana. King Mahrenda died of a heart attack in 1972, and his eldest son, Borinda, became king at 27. He introduced a constitution and limited his own royal authority. Prince Garinda was in charge of planning his brother's coronation. He also served as chairman of the Trust for Nature Conservation. On June 1st, 2001, while most of the royal family was attending a party in the palace gardens, the king's eldest son, Crown Prince Dipindar, opened fire. He shot and killed his father, King Barinda, his mother, Queen Ashwarya, his younger brother and sister, and other members of the royal family, before shooting himself. He survived, but was in a coma. He was king for three days, but died without regaining consciousness. There are several theories as to why Prince Deprinda murdered his family. They include him having been in love with Divyani Rana, the daughter of an Indian royal family. 
Due to her belonging to a lower caste, they were not allowed to wed. Another theory alleges the prince was unhappy about the country's shift from absolute to constitutional monarchy. The investigation of the massacre remains highly controversial. Ganindra became king of Nepal for the second time. In the midst of civil war with Maoist insurgents, the king dismissed three consecutive prime ministers for failing to secure peace. In 2005, he declared himself absolute ruler. A coalition of seven political parties protested his repressive regime, but the royal government responded harshly and 23 protesters were killed. The government of India supervised talks between the parties and the king. It was agreed that the king would cede power to a new government, but the monarchy would remain part of the constitution. Within months, the new government scrapped the king's political powers. Ganindra was pressured to abdicate in favor of his seven-year-old grandson, Prince Hiridindra. In 2008, the government officially abolished the monarchy and ordered former king Ganindra to vacate Narayaniti Palace. The palace was converted to a museum, and the crown jewels were declared a government property. Everything Ganindra had inherited from his brother was nationalized, but he was given a smaller palace as a personal residence. And because he spent the years of his brother's reign as a businessman and invested wealth inherited from other family members well, he remains a wealthy man with a fortune estimated in hundreds of millions of dollars. The former king has told journalists that he objects to the abolition of his throne because it was done by the government and said he would only accept his dethronement if the Nepalese people had voted for it. Until such time, he remains determined to return as king of Nepal. Fuad II, former king of Egypt and the Sudan, was born in 1952 to King Farouk and Queen Nidiman. The king had three daughters from his first marriage, but as the succession bars women, Fuad became heir to the throne and prince of Said. The prince was named after his grandfather, Fuad I, who had been declared the first king of the Egyptian Sultanate in 1922. Following World War I, the Ottoman Empire fell, and Egypt was set up as a British protectorate. According to Islamic tradition, the ruler would be known as Sultan, but British influence meant he was generally referred to as king. Discontentment with British presence grew among the Egyptians, culminating in the 1952 Suez Emergency, during which a British military base was laid siege by the Egyptian police. 43 Egyptian policemen and three British soldiers were killed in the attack. The next day, anti-British riots broke out and much of downtown Cairo was burned down. All this happened just 10 days after the birth of Crown Prince Fuad. King Farouk blamed the government, but he was unpopular owing to his playboy lifestyle. A group of free officers orchestrated a military coup, thus beginning the Egyptian revolution. King Farouk was ordered to abdicate in favor of his six-month-old son, Fouad. The whole royal family, including the baby king, fled to Italy. Farouk hoped that his son would be able to unify the country during his reign. He reigned as King Furad II, but his regents, the free officers, really ruled the nation. They promised to maintain a constitutional monarchy and only hold power until King Furad came of age. However, the monarchy was formally abolished in 1953, 11 months into the infant monarch's reign. The former boy king was stripped of his Egyptian citizenship. Fuad and his half-sisters were sent to live in a small village on Lake Geneva, Switzerland. They were cared for by a nanny, governess, and bodyguard. Fuad attended the local public school, where he was bullied. He then moved on to an elite boarding school. Former King Farouk remained in Rome. Queen Nidiman divorced him and returned to Egypt. Farouk visited his children two to three times a year. He died of a heart attack at 45 when his son was just 13. Fuad believed that his father was poisoned by Egyptian intelligence, though there is no evidence to confirm this. 
After his father's death, Fuad was guaranteed protection by Prince Rainier III and Grace Kelly of Monaco, and was granted a Monegasque passport. He spent summers in Monte Carlo and became friendly with the royal couple. By 1973, politics in Egypt had stabilized, and the government lifted Fuad and his half-sister's exile and restored their citizenship. His new Egyptian passport has no royal titles, but names him simply as Ahmed Fayed. In 1975, he received a degree in politics and economics from the University of Geneva. He then moved to Paris and set up a real estate business. In 1977, he married Dominique France Loeb Picard, a Jewish woman in a civil ceremony. She converted to Sunni Islam took the name Fadila, and the couple had a religious wedding in Monaco. Fadila formally adopted the title Queen of Egypt. They had three children, Muhammad Ali, Prince of the Said, Princess Fauzia Latifa, and Prince Fakhruddin. The former king returned to his homeland for the first time in 1991, 38 years after his exile. In 1996, Fuad and Fadila divorced. The former king called the breakup and estrangement from his children deeply painful, and he suffered depression and poor health. He returned to Switzerland to be close to his half-sisters. But the family have since grown closer. One other former monarch just missed making this list. Constantine II of Greece was born in 1940. He won a gold medal in sailing at the 1960 Olympic Games. He inherited the throne from his father in 1964 at 24. That year, he married his third cousin, Princess Anne Marie of Denmark. They had five children. In 1973, after nine years on the throne, Constantine was overthrown by a military coup, and the royal family fled the country. He spent the following decades living in the UK and was friendly with Prince Charles and many other European royals. He was eventually allowed to return to Greece, where he died on January 10, 2023, at the age of 82. He was buried in the royal cemetery at Tatoy Palace. His son, Crown Prince Pavlos, is now head of the Royal House of Greece. I will link my video all about Constantine II of Greece in the description. Want even more tea on history? Check out the History Tea Time podcast. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.